Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider this second Sunday after Pentecost is from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Now, we are going to continue going through Matthew until we finish the book. Uh, we started in Matthew with, uh, with Epiphany, and since the first two readings were already from Matthew, I just want to take the opportunity to, to go in order with the readings in Matthew all the way through the book. So we, we read Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus, and then we had Matthew's account of the baptism of Jesus, And next in line is this reading here, which is the temptation of Jesus. And in terms of time, it occurs right after Jesus' baptism. In fact, it says that he got out of the water and was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert. So he's immediately going into the desert from his baptism. Let me read to you the account. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. As I noted last week, very important that Jesus be baptized because in his baptism, he became Israel. At the same time, we, through our trust in Jesus, become one with Christ Jesus. And so we are inseparably linked through his work and our faith. Jesus became a human being and then became Israel so that when we put our trust in him and our faith in him, we are inseparably linked with him. So when God looked down at Jesus, when he was in the Jordan River and said, Behold, this is my son in whom I am well pleased, He looked down and he saw all of us because he had become Israel. And everybody who believes and trusts in him is linked with Jesus. We are in him. And so when God looks down at Jesus and says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased, he looks down at you and at me and says, you are my son in whom I'm well pleased. And it doesn't matter if you're male or female. You're a child of God, and he is well pleased with you, not because of anything that you've done, but because you are inseparably linked with Jesus Christ through faith. Now, after his baptism, where he, where he was baptized into Israel, he then went immediately into the desert to be tempted. Now, there is a reason for this. Understand that he is taking on manhood so that he can rule and reign the way God intended for mankind to rule and reign over his creation that Adam and Eve failed at. So now this is the new Adam, the last Adam, 
Jesus, who has become man, who has taken our place, who has literally stepped into our skin to do what Adam and Eve failed to do. And when they were tested by Satan, they failed. And now Jesus is going to be tested by Satan. Would he fail? Would he fail the way Adam and Eve did? Would he fail the way the Israelites did when they were tested in the desert? Well, I think you know the answer. He's not going to fail. But it's not because the devil didn't try. The devil comes to him when Jesus was very hungry and weak. After 40 days of fasting, he came to him and he said, If you are the Son of God. But doesn't that sound familiar? Do you remember the words of Satan to Eve in the garden? Did God really say that when you eat of that fruit, you should die? Just putting the little bit of a question mark in there. Just a tad bit of doubt. That's all he needs. If you are the Son of God, if you're really the Son of God, just turn one of these rocks into bread. Jesus hangs on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, and he quotes Scripture back at the devil. It comes from Deuteronomy 8. He says, man doesn't live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus was able to fend off the, the attempt of Satan to get him to doubt in himself and in his father. The devil didn't rush away, not yet. He comes to him again, and he says, you know, the scriptures say that he won't even let you bump your toe on a stone. If you should fall off this cliff, why, angels would, would grab you and keep you from falling. He's appealing to one of the Psalms, Psalm 91. So he's already caught on to Jesus' method of defending himself, where he went right to the word of God. The devil said, I'll, I'll use the word of God too. And trust me. He knows the Bible better than probably most of us. But Jesus answers him again. He goes back to the word of God in Deuteronomy and he says, listen, you're not to ever put the Lord your God to the test. That's an important lesson for us always. You know, we can trust in Jesus. We can trust in in the promises that God has made for us to take care of us. But we shouldn't put God to the test either. That's why even though God has a purpose and a plan for your life and desires to protect you so that you can get through this crazy world and do what he wants you to do, we don't step outside in front of oncoming traffic and put God to the test. We have to take care of ourselves, of our own lives. We don't foolishly test God to see if he really cares for us. We trust him and we take the ordinary steps that we need to take to make sure that we're okay, that we are safe. But we certainly don't worry beyond that. You take care of what you can do and then you have to leave it up to God. And when we worry beyond what, we're, what we can take care of, well, now we've entered into sin and fear. I see a lot of that going on these days. That's why I wanted to just make a note of that particular test. Thirdly, the devil propositions Jesus about worshiping him. And he goes straight for the heart. You see, Jesus was here in order to 
regain control for mankind over the earth. When God created the earth, he put Adam and Eve in charge of it. Their power and authority was usurped by the devil, by his wily ways, tempting them into doubt and disbelief. He became the prince of this earth. Now, ultimately, God is certainly in control of all things, but he desired for man to be over the earth. And so how does he do it? Why? By becoming man. So now the God who is in charge of the entire universe over everything in heaven and on earth is now a man as well as God. And he has been given authority over all things. Now he had to pass the test. He had to keep the law completely. He was born under the law, and so he had to keep the law completely. And that's what Jesus did for us. And it started that day in the desert when he was tempted. Remember, he is now Israel. He has, he has been baptized into Israel. And we, through faith, are baptized into him. And so when he suffered on that cross and died, everyone who trusts in him and believes in him died with him. We died to self. And when he was raised to new life, we too were raised to new life. You see, we are, we are inseparable. We are linked in a way that just cannot be broken. It cannot be undone. What happens to Christ happens to you. What happens to Christ happens to me. What happens to me happens to Jesus. What happens to you happens to Jesus. This is why he will ultimately say, when he finally judges the entire world, whatever you did to the least of these, my brothers, my sisters, you did it to me. We are inseparably linked with Christ Jesus. And so when he passed the test, we passed the test. Not because we have kept the law completely. We don't even get close. But he has. And we are united with him through faith. And now he has been given all power and all glory, all authority over heaven and earth. A man. A man rules this world. A man who is also God, Jesus Christ. And because we are inseparably linked with him, we too pass the test. Have a blessed Sunday, everybody.